As we all know, investing can be a tricky business and only a select few have managed to master the art of consistently beating the broader stock market. From legendary value investors like Warren Buffett to modern day titans like Ray Dalio or Michael Burry. There are so many investors who have had an undeniable impact on the world of finance. In this video, I'll be ranking these investors based on their overall impact on the industry, their investment strategies, and of course, their ability to generate impressive returns for their clients. And I will not only rank five investors, not 10, but I've actually taken a closer look at 20 legendary investors. So whether you're a seasoned investor looking for some inspiration or a beginner who wants to learn from the best, this video is for you and let's get started. Okay, so before we start, let me just outline the methodology that I've used to come up with my final ranking. So what I've done is I looked at three quantitative metrics. The first one is the annual rate of return the superstar investors were able to generate for their investors. Now, obviously the absolute performance might not be as relevant as one might initially think. A quite shocking statistic that I came across last year is that beating the market by 5% annually between 1960 and 1980 would have made you less money than underperforming the market by 5% in the period between 1980 and 2000. So of course, we also have to compare the absolute performance of the investors that we are looking at in this video to the performance of the benchmark index over the same time period. And we will consider the S&P 500 for the purpose of this video. And then thirdly, I'll also consider how long the investor was active for and for how many years he or she was able to outperform the market. And in this context, I'll also share the total aggregate return the fund manager delivered to yeah, his or her investors, which ranges from an increase of 7x to an increase of 230,000x. And then there's also a qualitative side to the ranking, right? Because of course you also need to take into account the overall impact that the various investors had on the world of investing. Okay, before we dive into my list, make sure to hit the like button and maybe also comment down below which investors you would have put on your list. Also, there are lots of small and I think very valuable little lessons that we can learn from each of these investors in the video. So make sure not to miss out on these and let's get started. So I'll start with Bill Ackman. He's one of the investors who's still actively managing money today. He's the founder and CEO of Pershing Square Capital Management, which is a New York based hedge fund. And I'm sure most of you are very well aware of Bill Ackman as he's one of the most prominent figures in the modern world of investing, known for his activism and high profile investments, but also for his biggest mistakes, such as his investments in the pharmaceutical company Valiant or his 1 billion short position yeah, that went wrong in Herbalife. If we consider Bill Ackman's actual performance though, we can see that Ackman has always recovered from these major mistakes and he was able to quite handily beat the market over a long period of time. Between 2004, when he launched Pershing Square, in 2019, he generated an annual return of 14.3%, while over the same time period, the S&P returned 9.1%. So he outperformed the market by 5.2% annually over 15 years, increasing the money of investors of Pershing Square investors by 7x. So what I've done is I've put Ekman in the B tier. Moving on, next I've taken a closer look at Dr. Michael Burry. Obviously Burry gained widespread recognition for his successful bet against the subprime mortgage market in the mid 2000s, which was documented in the book. In the movie The Big Short and he started his own hedge fund Cyan Asset Management in 2000 and I would argue that he's one of the most popular investors among finance YouTubers as videos about him and his predictions for yeah, the future for some reason are incredibly popular and generate hundreds of thousands of views. But despite his popularity I don't consider him a superstar investor. In fact Ever since his impressive housing market prediction in the years leading up to the 2008 crisis, his performance has been pretty disappointing. According to StockCircle.com, over the last 10 years, ever since reopening his hedge fund, this time called Siren Asset Management, Burry generated an aggregate return of 
285%, outperforming the S&P over the same period only by a very slim margin and net of fees, investors in various fund very likely underperformed the most commonly used benchmark index. So I've actually put them in the E tier, which might come as a surprise to some of you. So let me know what you think of this and where you would have put Michael Burry yeah, in this ranking. Next up, we've got the first investor that I'm going to put into the S tier. And I'm not sure if many people here on YouTube will be familiar with this name. It's David Tepper. He created the Apple Loser Management Hedge Fund in early 1993 and over a 21 year period generated an annual compound return of an incredible 26.7%, beating the S&P's performance of 9% annually by a very wide margin. The 17.7% outperformance is actually the highest outperformance of all investors that we will have on this list, which led to an aggregate return of 182x for investors who stayed with him for the full 21 years. Next up, we've got Guy Spear, who is another superstar investor who I personally absolutely admire, especially for his ability to sit still and do nothing for a very long period of time, waiting for the really fat pitches. Over the last three years, for example, if we look at his portfolio activity, his portfolio barely changed at all. And even though he's also among the group of the best investors of all time, I've only put him in the D tier because if we look at the actual performance of his fund, the Agri-Marine Fund, we can see that between 1997 and 2020, he compounded investors' capital at a return of 9.6% annually, beating the S&P 500's return by only 1.4% annually over this 23-year period, 7xing the capital of investors. That's a great result, but not as impressive as the performance of some of the other investors that we will have on the list. In fact, Guy Spear himself recently acknowledged how difficult it is to actually outperform the market in a recent podcast appearance on the Young Investors podcast with Brendan from the New Money YouTube channel. Let me just show you a short sequence from that interview. We all know that the majority of active fund managers don't beat the S&P 500 over a long period of time. I think it's in the States, it's like over 15, the last 15 years, 89% of active fund managers haven't beaten the market. Um, in the last five years, I think, Brandon, I have not beaten the S&P, including last year. Uh, and uh, a, a part of my letter is writing about why, even though I got so many things right, I still didn't beat the S&P last year, which is a kind of a frustration for me. But I would also say that the, the margin by which I've beaten the S&P is slim. It's like about 1%. As net of all fees, but it's a slim margin. It's it's really, really, really tough to do. And yeah, so uh, the skier who wants to win the season uh, has to make a very, very difficult trade-off because if he skis the fastest possible, he increases the likelihood of injury. And uh, if he injures himself, or she injures herself, then uh, they're not going to get to the end of the season. But in the, in the dynamics of the individual race, there is enormous pressure to ski as fast as you can and take a hidden risk that you will get injured. And when you win the race, Nobody says, oh my God, you took all these hidden risks. That actually wasn't optimal for the whole season. And so um, there, there are things that appear optim op optimal from one perspective, which are not optimal from another perspective. And often I think that we as investors get the perspective wrong. And so, uh, you know, if I was to go into the task of running a great fund and I try to put up really, really good numbers but I take hidden risks to do it. And then at the end of five years or at the end of N years, I blow up. And that happens constantly and consistently. I personally love the skiing analogy that Guy Spear shared with Brenton here. And it reminds me of Terry Smith to the France analogy, which also stresses that fund managers should focus on the downside first and be absolutely obsessed about compounding money over the long run without big losses. The Tour de France, well, has never been won by somebody who won every single stage. In fact, on a number of occasions, it was won by riders who never won a single stage, meaning the 
first time they ever stood at the top of the podium was when they arrived in Paris. Now Terry Smith, he compares this to investing because you're not trying to beat the market every single year. You want to beat the market over a 10 year period or an even longer period. We are trying to win the Tour de France, but we're not trying to win every single stage. So let's rank Terry Smith. I've put the British investor and CEO of Fundsmith, who is considered one of the most successful fund managers in the UK in the B tier. Between 2011 and 2021, he compounded investors' capital at an impressive compounded rate of return of 16.9%, beating the market by 2.4% annually and increasing investors' capital by a factor of fivefold over this 10-year period. What I admire Terry Smith for is not only his focus on investing in only super high quality and yeah, profitable companies with sustainable business models, but also his public criticism of the fund management industry as a whole, and in particular, the high fees charged by many of his yeah, fellow fund managers. He's actually a prolific writer and frequently shares his ideas about investing and finance through articles and interviews. And his book, Investing for Growth, which is essentially a collection of his best and most influential articles, is one of my favorite investing books of all time. An investor that I put into the A tier is Nick Sleep. Nick Sleep and his partner Zach generated an incredible return of 20.8% annually between 2001 and 2013, beating the S&P by 15.1%. Let me say that again, 15.1% and 12xing the money clients invested with the Nomad Investment Partnership over this 12 year period. Some of you might have never heard of Nick Sleep. But I think if you were tasked to name the greatest investing letters of all time, I think Nick Sleep and his letters would be right up there along with the letters of Warren Buffett, to whom we will get a little later in this video. I would say that the only reason I've not put Nick Sleep in the S tier is the fact that yeah, he only compounded clients money for 12 years before he actually closed the fund. So unlike some investors that have made it into the S tier on my list, He's not proven that he can actually accomplish similar returns with a larger asset base. Now, next up, let's talk about another investor. And this is our first woman on the list. I would argue that few names have generated as much buzz and excitement in recent years as Kathy Wood and her ARK investment funds. With a series of bold bets on emerging technologies and high growth companies, ARK Invest achieved some truly stunning returns in a short period of time especially in 2020, making it one of the most talked about investment firms in recent years. I've actually recently made a video about her in which I highlighted that while Kathy Wood has delivered some great returns over the short term, she most certainly couldn't keep her promises if you take a longer term view. She was underperforming common benchmark indices like the S&P 500 by quite a wide margin if you take a longer term view. Ever since the fund's peak in 2021, ARK has lost 73% in value, wiping out multiple billions of investor wealth. So it should come as no surprise that Kathy Wood also ends up in the E tier. And to be clear, I admire Michael Burry for how he anticipated the housing crisis. And I think he deserves to be among yeah, a list of the greatest investors of all time. Kathy Wood, on the other hand, well, she has a big name in the world of investing, but she's actually the only one on my list who I would not consider a superstar investor. Now, the eighth investor on my list, that's another superstar investor, and that's the name Ray Dalio. He's another popular investing figure among YouTubers, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, the largest hedge fund with around $126 billion in assets under management. But just like Michael Burry, he only ends up in the E tier on my list, and that's because he's best known for his all-weather portfolio, which is an investment strategy designed to be a globally diversified portfolio that can perform well in various market conditions. The portfolio is actually intended to be relatively simple and easy to implement with a mix of 30% stocks, 40% long-term bonds, 15% intermediate-term bonds, and then some gold and other commodities. But obviously this attempt to reduce volatility and to own an asset mix that performs very well in all sorts of market environments comes at a cost. If we consider the 10 year performance of Dalio's fund, we can see that he's massively lagging the performance of the S&P 
500, hence this E-tier ranking. Then we've got Benjamin Graham, known as the father of value investing, and I guess his ranking should be fairly obvious. I've put him in the S tier, because in terms of lasting greatness, no investor fits the description better than the late Benjamin Graham, the mentor of Warren Buffett. Graham's average investment performance was a 20% annualized return over a 20 year period between 1936 and 1956, outpacing the overall market performance for the same period, which was 12.2% annual. But the impact of Graham's approach goes far beyond the performance of the Graham Newham partnership. Few investors have been as influential as Graham, as his approach and his two books, Security Analysis and The Intelligent Investor, defined investment philosophies all around the world for multiple decades and still do today. Now we'll speed it up a little for the next three investors. We've got Lou Simpson in the A tier with a compounded annual return of 20.3% over a 24 year period, beating the market by 6.3% annually and more than 100xing clients' initial investments. Then we've got Seth Klarman, the founder of one of the largest hedge funds in the world, the Baupost Group, and author of the timeless investing book Margin of Safety, which you can buy for around a thousand bucks on eBay. And he only makes it in the D tier. Between 1992 and 2001, he barely outperformed the market. He then performed incredibly well in the run-up to the 2008 great financial crisis, but then again underperformed the broader market during the longest bull market of US stock market history between 2008, 2009 and 2020. You couldn't find any data on his long-term 20 or 30 year track record, so feel free to help me out here. And if you know the exact number, share it in the comments down below. Then Tom Russo makes it into the B tier with a very impressive 5% annual outperformance over 30 years. And so does Li Lu, who outperformed the market by 9%. Then we've got Chuck Ackerer, who can also be found in the B tier. Of course, his performance is lower than some of the other investors in this tier, but Chuck Ackerer, with his super high business quality focus, managed to outperform the market over a very long time. 31 years in total, which I think is an impressive feat for any investor. And of course, as a result, he increased clients' investments with him by a factor of 68 fold. Okay, now we get to the most exciting part because I've got a few more investors who make it into the S tier. First, we've got Joel Greenblatt, who started his own hedge fund, Gotham Capital, in 1985. And in the 10 years that followed, he produced an unbelievable annualized return of over 50% before fees and 30% net of all fees through a combination of his focus on special situations and his deep value investing approach. That's actually the best annual return of all investors that I have on my list. Then Peter Lynch also makes it into the S tier with the performance of his Magellan fund, which had 18 million in assets under management when he founded that fund. And by the time Lynch resigned as a fund manager in 1990, the fund had grown to more than 14 billion in assets under management, reflecting a compounded annual return of 26.5%, almost twice as much as the broader stock market. Then obviously we've got Warren Buffett. You really don't need yeah, many words to describe what he has accomplished yeah, in his lifetime. And obviously Buffett stands out. Even among the SK investors over a period of 63 years, he was able to increase the value of $1 invested with him in 1957 to $234,371 dollars, a compounded return of 21.3% compared to 10.4% of the S&P 500. And while this is not the highest annual return on the list, the sustainability of those market beating returns over more than six decades is incredible and unmatched, as beating the market gets much harder as the asset base grows. Buffett himself has said, quote unquote, the huge sums of capital we currently manage eliminate any chance of exceptional performance. Finally, of course, Buffett's longtime business partner and friend Charlie Munger is also on the list and of course also among the greatest investors of all time in the S tier. I think Munger's impact on Warren Buffett's success and Buffett's yeah, investment philosophy cannot be overestimated. When Buffett began, his investing career was characterized by buying so-called cigar butts, 
low quality but cheap companies with one more puff left in them. But then he evolved to focus on higher quality companies that he could hold for a longer period of time due to Munger's influence. We could of course also analyze the performance of the Daily Journal Corporation of which Charlie Munger was the chairman for 45 years before stepping down very recently but I think he mainly deserves his spot in the S tier for his impact at Berkshire Hathaway. All right, we've got two more investors. Both Monish Prabhrai and Robert Vinal are ranked in the C tier. I'll display the performance of both investors on screen right now. And what I want to point out here is that more recently, Robert Vinal's business owner fund has actually experienced a very rough performance. So his track record as of 2023 should be significantly worse than the numbers that I originally had at hand. Now, please let me know in the comments down below whether you agree or disagree with my ranking and if I missed out on any other names.